Hi, and welcome to another edition of Sand Shark Bites. I'm your host, James Duffy, alongside the chip to my dale, the fox to my hound, Carlo Peruzza. How you doing, Carlo? I'm doing great, man. It's been a good week. We had a lot of sports here. We're tying up a lot of strings. Mm -hmm. We're putting a bow on most of the uh, fall well, semester here. A lot here. of seasons coming to the end right now. We're, we're just past midterms academically, and uh, now things are starting to, to slow down athletically. Um, but we've still got one team that's still working out there and play and has games yet to go, and that's Sand Shark Soccer. Last week we had two games, didn't win either no, way. No, didn't go as well as we planned. I mean, we played Weber International, and then on Saturday we played one of the best teams in the conference, Southeastern, and we lost 9-1 to to Southeastern. It wasn't good. It was senior day. But, I mean, we ran into a team that had the determination, the heart, the grit, the skill, they were not losing. They had one of these play one of their players, her last name's Canoe, and uh, I believe she's on the Nigerian national team. Actually, she's part of the system, but she coming to the game had 25 goals on the season. Got a hat trick, so had 28 by the end of the game. And just watching this girl played was unreal. Like you could just tell she looked different when she had the ball on her. She was able to make plays. Her teammates were really good at finding her. And then, like, when she shot it, it was like bullets. And and some of our players really looked good, but they were in the face of overwhelming opposition. Yeah. And, and uh, Brittany Neeser playing defense oh, was, she's was great. standing tall uh, and really taking up a lot of the field and doing a great job there. I wanted to comment on that. I saw some really great play out of her uh, on Saturday, which was, again, senior day. And not the senior day we want to have, but it's the senior day we got. Uh, six, seven seniors out? Seven seniors out. Uh, Unreal, isn't it? And we're losing some, some big record holders uh, in, in the MJ Ordunia, Haley Pena combination. <sighs> we're going to have to see some, some of these younger players step up next year. And uh, to see uh, Sarah Withers be leaving us and yep. uh, Hannah Christ um, both out and the rest of the California Girls Squad and uh, uh, Danny Borja. Uh, um, Danny Borjas, Mandy Preciado, Preciado. Hannah Christ, MJ uh, Ordunia. We had a whole list of them. A lot and, of uh, them. Yeah, seven seven seniors that'll be leaving us. What's crazy with me mm -hmm. is, like, I came into the school when they came in, and now all of a sudden they're gone, and yeah. I'm like, wow, I'm gone soon. And what that's what happens here. We have these great, talented students, both on and off the field, come and go, and uh, their 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 academic careers are like mayflies yeah. to us. We're here forever, and then we look back and we say. Where do these people come and go? And uh, we look to see them all come back as alumni when we have the alumni beer garden at home. I'll be back, we'll, we'll Don't be, worry. Uh, we'll be hosting you there. Um, but the Sand Shark Soccer has uh, one more game left to play. They're playing Johnson & Wales mm -hmm. this Saturday. Uh, got a fair to middle chance about beating them. And if we do that, we stay alive technically. Uh, but we've got we a lot of other help. conference plays. We've got a lot of people that need losing uh, yeah. on Saturday to help us out to, to so we can see some uh, postseason play. We'll see what it's like. We're a game below 500, and we're looking to uh, at least even it up. And um, we've got a good chance of doing that on Saturday against Johnson and Wales. And a absolutely. You know, I mean, our seniors, it's going to be possibly their last soccer game ever. So, you know, they're going to be hungry. They're going to want to win. They're not going to want to lose. So they're going to leave it all on the pitch on Saturday. And we'll see. They're going to be on the road, so we're not going to be able to see it. But you can see it at home. Uh, on the Sand Shark Game Day Network. Yes, on and Stretch that, Internet. That is free. You don't even have to mm -hmm. get the package for it anymore. And uh, so you, if you're not, not watching at the field, you can watch it on your computer. You can, uh, you won't be able to stream it live on your TV, but uh, <laughs> there's lots of things you can do to, to yep. still see that happen. So um, we'd like to congratulate all of them on a well-fought season. We'll tie the whole thing up, though, next week um, as we, we won't have any. Next week will be our last week for the fall. Wow. Yeah, because we won't have any sports to cover unless there's some postseason play. Um, hopefully we'll have at least another week after that, but we're probably looking at next week being our last show for a while because um, everybody else has wrapped it up. Men's golf, Yeah. Um, their game was, or their tournament was rained out after two rounds in, in uh, Doral in Florida. Um, we ended up eighth overall. Of course, Newport La Parage get, gets another top ten finish. Oh my gosh, um, what a stud Newport yeah. is. He's been playing unbelievably this season. I mean, th there's been a couple of players from that team that really have emerged. Will Knipe, he's playing great also. Mm -hmm. And, like, that's one of my favorite teams. They're yeah. all my buddies. They're all good kids. And Newport, he's 
turning into one of the best athletes we've had at this school. He really is amazing. And the, the golf teams, we tend to uh, get some smart kids playing golf. Yeah. At the end of the year at our athletic ceremony, we'll see that uh, the, the, the top GPAs or the top team GPAs will generally go to the golfers. Especially for the women's side of the it. Women's team, we see it as well. And um, they're finishing up there. Or they finished mm -hmm. up now. They came in. Uh, seventh at their invitational last week in, um, which is now escaping me, but I'll come back to it. Uh, Blanca Porta, again, yeah. leading the pack. She's doing a great job. Um, a at the, a at player I'd like to highlight for the, the women. Winthrop invitational. Oh, Winthrop. <laughs> Winthrop, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Got Winthrop. It. But a player I'd like to highlight mm -hmm. for the women's team is Kayla Poff, mm -hmm. junior transfer. Yeah, she's coming in. She's putting up great scores. I mean, that's just what this team needed because last year they were already one of the best women's team in the NAIA. And now to get a ch girl like Kayla Poff, and I didn't lose anybody. They haven't lost anybody. They've just gotten stronger. That's great. Uh, uh, yeah. And Kayla being the only American uh, to uh, go out in this, in this field for the field, Winter yes, International. Yes, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. There are a couple others on the team, but mm -hmm. uh, we have a great spread of international uh, players and, and we, draw from, yeah, we draw from all over the place and it's it's really fantastic uh, to see them out there and, and Blanca was tearing it up uh, she got the 77 on day one and 71 on day two mm -hmm. um, you know that's that's fantastic and um, the other the, the, her team backed her up they did come in seventh uh, overall but you know they're still top out there finish. St still still a top 10 finish right and um, but that's the end of their fall season, and I hope they're feeling like uh, they've made some good strides. They're a young yeah. team too; a lot of sophomores on that team. We we could see a couple more really good years out of women's golf uh, with just the players we have right now. Um, but the future is always bright, right? You oh never yeah. know who's going to show up next oh year. Yeah. Uh, but these 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 players we've got right now are real leaders and real strong players, and we're really pleased with uh, both men and women's golf right. teams who have who have wrapped up their their fall season. We'll look to see them play again in the spring. And then for the last, the last one, the long day, the long morning Ooh. of uh, cross country, we had at our Sand Shark Invitational right here in Bluffton, um, 525 runners. We did. It was a lot of people. 525 runners uh, came out to, uh, to to run under the, the, the guidance of Larry, Larry Kimball, who came and yeah. managed the event. And he's been managing that for a long time. And even in his retirement, he still comes out to... Uh, to help out the, the sand charge. You know, Larry Kimball really is going to be doing that until he's dead. Yeah, well. Like, Larry's not going to stop. And it, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's a terrifying scene to have all those runners come at you on yeah. that, that open field early in the morning. Uh, but it's a great to see, and it's a great route uh, to see run. And um, we're a young team there, too. We're uh, really young. We're, we're, we did not... Uh, we did not lose the whole thing. No, we didn't. I mean, we were without arguably our best runner on the men's side, Christian Slayton. Mm -hmm. He's been having some injury issues, so he didn't partake. But, I mean, Wesley Murphy went. Mm -hmm. He looked good. Wesley Murphy came in as our top runner. Yes. Um, and uh, Just a freshman. Just a freshman, yeah, but still um, yeah, not top 50, but he was still right up yeah, there. Yeah, it was. And, uh, yeah. um, out of, you know, 300 men's runners, not we, bad. we he did a good showing, and um, still we like to see a lot of potential. We got a rebuilding year coming we up in, uh, in a lot of sports, but um, I'm real hopeful. We're 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 s everything's so young right now. Um, all these teams are so young that we've got in cross country and in, in these golf teams, and um, we're excited to see what the future has for us. You sat down with Larry. I sat down. Actually, mm -hmm. I stood up. You with stood Larry. up. And it was a stand-up interview. All it was right. Stand-up interview, but yeah, I mean, I just talked to him about. Uh, the event, how it's changed over the years, what can we expect? And you guys will see him talk about he, it. He's, it's going to be a little, nice little short interview with Larry, will, which yes. is surprising. Quick and but, simple to uh, the point. Let's see what uh, Coach Kimball has to tell us. I'm Carlo Peruza, and today I'm at the Sand Shark Invitational, and I'm joined by former USCB cross country coach and USCB legend Larry Kimball. Thanks for joining us. You're more than welcome. So let's just talk about the run today. How do you think the Sand Shark Invitational went? Well, I think this year uh, it was kind of the unknown. We had the same number of teams. We had uh, uh, 525 runners, uh, 32 teams uh, per gender or so. And, uh, but the favorites that we had last year, uh, eight of the top 10 did not return 
via graduation. So it was a little bit different. We didn't know what to expect, and, uh, and it became a, a really good race. Right, that's awesome. So this is now the 11th Sand Shark Invitational. How have they changed over the years? Well, uh, we did the first one in 2006. USCB didn't even have a team. So uh, we, we hosted it on campus. Uh, we started and finished in front of one of the trailers. So uh, uh, we had maybe 30 or 40 runners, and that was it. Uh, and now over the years, we've just expanded this. Now it's one of the top uh, NAI uh, invitationals uh, in the southeast. Awesome. So it's tradition that's just going to keep going and keep going. As long as I live. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so lastly, what can people expect for next year's Sand Shark Invitational? Well, we, we've been talking about uh, combining the Invitational with a high school meet. Uh, we hosted, a couple nights ago, we hosted the Skiza Regional Meet here on this same course in Hardyville. Uh, we're, we're hoping to do a, a, a high school race, uh, also a college race. Um, I've been asked now to do a Division I uh, MEAC race here. Um, and also we want to do the LK5K on the same weekend. So uh, everything will come together, and we might go Friday, Saturday, but we haven't worked out those details yet. Right. All right, well, I really appreciate you joining me. Thank you so much. You're more than, you're more than welcome. Thank you. I'm Carlo Prusa. Stay tuned. At the University of South Carolina, Beaufort, we offer small classes, individual attention, and an affordable education in an atmosphere that fosters diversity and achievement. We are students. We field nine Sand Shark sports teams that compete in the Sun Conference. We are athletes. We are one university with two campuses serving the coastal areas of South Carolina and Georgia. We are the low country. We are the fastest growing four-year school in the University of South Carolina system. We are USCB. Uh, I want to mention that uh, we said Wesley Murphy was the, the, the fastest runner for the USCB on the men's side, and uh, on the women's side, uh, Sierra uh, McMahon. Yeah. A um, couple of good, good Irish folk there out there running for us. I don't think of Irish as being the cross country, but I like those surnames. And uh, well, that really ties it up. Uh, we got golf in the bag. We got on both sides, men's and women's. We got cross country in the bag, and uh, soccer's almost over we just have one thing to report on next week for you but um but next week we will have a catching up with carlo i'm just going to throw that out there standing, that's important when and does uh, the catching up with carlo come it's going to be a good one it's going to be a canadian edition of catching up with carlo i met with the guys on the golf team so if you guys don't know we have four canadians on the golf team and our conversations went from tim hordens to the royal canadian mounted police to <laughs> golfing in the snow to <laughs> hockey so this one is going to be outstanding. I, I really look forward to it. Um, it's, it's, it's always exciting to have a good, well-produced Catching Up with oh Carlos yes. segment uh, where we get as many players in talking to you as possible. Uh, for the last and for uh, probably the, the, the last time for this player this season, um, we're going to give our, our Player of the Week um, <laughs> to uh, Newport La Parage. Good again. I think we're going to top ten finishes. <laughs> I mean, how third. can you not? Uh, I, I want to give honorable mention certainly to uh, Blanca Forda, who is also out there leading uh, the, mm -hmm. on the golf team there for their side. And um, Sierra McMahon on the track Sierra team. McMahon, again, uh, looking really good on the, mm -hmm. the, the cross country team. But for, uh, for you know, three top tens in a row. Yeah, you it's have to. You, I mean, you got to give it to them. Three um, tournaments this year. If won we, one of them, uh, second place the other, <laughs> top ten the other. Yeah, and we got, um, we just can't. Can't give it to you because we like it. It's not the no. it's not the same shark we like of the week. Uh, we do have to have some kind of criteria to give it to you. So, Newport Laparash getting in for the third time, or however many times we've got this third, second yeah. or third time this this fall. Um, Sand Shark bites player of the week. Uh, that puts bow on today's. We'll get see you one We're more done. time at least next week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe we'll another week after. Up. We'll wrap yeah. it all up and uh, until we see you again, keep those fins up.